we're going to sort of get people to really think about being present in their relationship mm -hmm. and perhaps things aren't going as, as well as they'd like them to be. What are the things that you would say to them to ask themselves or to focus on and see if it's, if it's worth, you know, if they want to salvage it or what they can do to make it healthier or get the communication process back together again? Well, this is generally where relationships break down. What are sort of three things that you would say, and you need to do this? Well, the first thing I would do is take stock of where you're at. So know where you are. And, and ask yourself, okay, where am I right now? And to be, I would actually invite people to write down everything they don't like in the relationship because it's easier. We're, we've got that on the tongue. Right. So you know what? It, it's yes, it is about positivity, mm. but not false positivity, not mm. um, denial. Okay. Mm. So just jot down ten things, ten things that you don't like about your relationship. And about you, that person or your relationship? Um, it can be both. Okay. You know what? You're probably going to make it easier. It's going to be about them. Right. <laughs> okay. We're human. So write that list out. When you've got that list, then I want you like to take it. So I call that the contrast list. Take your contrast, or before I was calling it conflict, take it and flip it. What's the opposite? To those 10 things. To those 10 things. So like, <laughs> I was going to say he snores as one. <laughs> so I hate that he snores every night. I'm using all the, the male examples, but anyway, so he snores at night, and you write that down. Well, what's the opposite? He sleeps peacefully, perhaps? So you write that, and you, then you have this desire list, like what you want starts to formulate, mm. and then you look at it, and you commit for six months. You commit to that list, and you commit not, they don't have to change, that you're going to see them like that. Right. So it's not always going to be about them, but let's just take those. Those yeah, are the hard ones. So let's yeah. say... I commit to seeing him as a peaceful sleeper even when he is snoring like a train. <laughs> okay? Because what did I say before? It's not easy to stay balanced. And anybody that wants it to be simple isn't really wanting to play the game. So no, this no. game, if you really want to play and you want conscious love, get ready. Because taking that on for six months, if you end up leaving that relationship, you will leave the relationship with love. So no matter what, love is present. So it's, it's, why? Because there's a greater understanding. Because you've actually taken the time to really look at them, yeah. and look at the flip side, and then you you, you really can well, sort of see it for what it is. I think what you do in that moment of you take your power back, you mm. take responsibility mm. for how you've been showing up, how you've been looking at it, and then if you decide that you want to leave, you leave in a loving way. That when you go to your next relationship, you're not bringing that same energy, that same stuff. Because how many people do we know that look, that next partner looks an awful lot like the last one, and I don't yeah. mean physical, right? <laughs> we all have friends like this, yeah. and we think, oh my word, they've married the same The same guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because they brought themselves. Uh. You're, you're like, you're the hero you've been looking for, and you bring yourself to each one. And I say that to a lot of people because the great way we want to get out of it is to escape. Mm. Oh, if I just get out, then it'll be fine. But I say... That's just the beginning. So I even encourage while you're in there, take the breeding ground, make your list, do the hard yards. As Work an on athlete, yourself. look at that. We had to do that every day. We had to practice that. We had to cheer when we made a mistake. Okay? So when you're, you know, at world championships and you have to cheer when you make a mistake, that doesn't happen on day one. That happened two years ago when we started practicing it. Yeah. So that when we get there and yeah. it matters, because Games and life isn't won when things are going well. It's the breeding ground is when there's conflict, when stuff's going on. That's where you really win. And, and that's, yeah, I think it's just a whole shift of, of what we see as happiness. From last, everyone gets that. It's mm -hmm. all, it's fantastic. You think it's going to last forever. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, you sort of settle down into, you know, what we really are in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the control thing. The power and control is where I think a lot of the relationship, it stays there. But there is the potential to pop out into conscious love. But even the word conscious um, starts to invite awareness, an awareness of self in relation to the other person. So the word relationship is in relation. So you are in relation to someone else. Mm -hmm. So being able to see myself in this mirror that is you. And oftentimes that's so challenging that rather than look at it, we fight against it. 
So there's the battle. I, I don't want to see because you are actually reflecting some of the things inside of me that I might not like. You don't like. I want to hide. Mm. This might be the dark side of me and you keep showing it to me. So, I, so basically it's, there might be some sort of trigger point that, that makes you react in a, a certain pattern or that you might react a certain way and go, I hate myself because you make me feel this way. Yeah, because when I look in that mirror, I see it and I don't like it. And I think that that's why relationships are so challenging because in some ways it's more comfortable or safer to stay alone. But it isn't. It's, that's the illusion. And the, I think the, the great illusion is that I need to avoid this moment of power and control, but you, you can't avoid it because the only way to conscious love is to go through that. Through that. And to actually shine some light on yeah. the dark pieces of ourselves. And I think relationships is the, the breeding ground for that. And it, it's our humanness as well. It's what makes us human is that we are in relation to other people. Mm. If not, it'd be like those scary movies where you wake up one day and everyone's been annihilated on the planet. And you're the only one. And you're the one. only one. Where do you think the greatest deficiency is in relationships? Well, I think we have a great strength um, with lust, the, the lust phase. But when we get into, I think we drop into this power and control, this battle in a relationship for power and control. And I see that as a place that a lot of people get stuck, not just in intimate relationships, mm -hmm. but even in family relationships, you know, with your parents or siblings. And so I see that one of the big conflict zones that, that come up for people in relationships. And I think what happens is we stay in that friction and we don't really understand how we can pop out the other side because I believe we don't practice it. I think we expect a relationship to perform Mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. but we don't put anything into it. We don't, there's no fuel, there's no practice, there's mm. no training. Mm. So one of the key areas is how do you actually practice being understood and understanding that people may not have the same approach or the same communication style. Um, for example, the love language. If um, you're in a relationship with anyone, you're pretty guaranteed that you're not going to be the same. Over, over a period of time or over years. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's, yes, of course, because like you said, over time you'll redefine yourself mm. or you won't. Mm. And I think that that's what the, the practice or the training helps is how can I redefine myself and then how can I redefine with another person? Mm. Get to a relationship, they've been in something for sort of 10 plus years or whatever, a long term, mm. that they are best friends and that's great and they'll sort of live with that the rest of their lives. And I, I know that there's, you know, there's no intimacy there. Um, mm. Should people live like that or should they actually recognise? Because I think a lot of those people probably just put their head in the sand about, oh, that's okay, we don't, you know, we don't do that anymore. But we're, yeah. we're really happy anyway. It's a great question because what I say to a lot of couples is take off the table what your friends say is going on in their relationship because we compare a lot. So I just tell everyone, everyone lies and I'll tell you it's true because <laughs> I get the truth. Everyone's lying about mm. how often they have sex. Mm. So first of all, a lot of people are comparing intimacy and how it should be to what they see in the movies, but even their friends. More than movies, I think it's our friendships, people tell little stories, and people are generally embellishing. So what I tell every couple is, it's your balance, and it's finding what your balance is. So friendship, being best friends, I believe is the greatest way to help your intimacy, to begin mm. to balance it, because friends can actually work it out. They can actually create a plan they want to. They have the communication to actually stay in the game long enough to pop out to conscious love. To be honest, most people don't stay in the game long enough. Do you think we're sort of quitters because it all gets too hard? Yep, I do. Mm. And I think sometimes there's something to be learned from other cultures. Mm. Um, we tend to criticize a culture with arranged marriages or um, different ways of getting into a relationship. But interestingly enough, the premise of that is I am actually going to design this relationship rather than start with the lust and attraction they start with something else and they actually grow into love and grow into this balance that I'm talking about mm. so I'm not saying that we're to run over into Eastern philosophy no no but <laughs> balancing that too yeah. <laughs> because we we are who we are mm. so I think that it's being able to take what we've got and and live our truest life you know mm. live I believe that we are all becoming more but most of the time we're not keeping up 
and a relationship that is struggling has become more than that couple is keeping up with. Yeah, interesting. And in that moment, mm. that's what feels bad. Mm. Because whether you know it or not, the union, the, it has become conscious, but the two people are the only ones that aren't keeping up with it. With everything else. And that's painful. Yeah. And f yeah. from my philosophy, I believe that that's the pain. For us to have a bit more balance in our life and more acceptance of people, what are the things we should be really mindful of in terms of trying to avoid conflict with others? Um, like you said, our social network, which mm. is every touch point, any time we are, and that's, we're just talking physical touch, so actually in touch with another person, there's um, potential for conflict. So there's a conflict zone there. Um, I think that's actually exciting. Most people really don't like that. But <laughs> generally know, not. Generally, generally sort of not. Back away. Um, the exciting part is that the actual conflict or um, thing that we don't like helps us to shape what we do like and what we do want. Mm. So that's why I see the benefit of it. Mm. Because in the moment that you know what you don't want, the equal and opposite is there for you. Mm. And if you never have those moments, you never have the nirvana either. Mm. That moment Because you don't recognize what it no. is. It, it's the great clarifier. It's the great windshield wiper, you know? It's like, whoa. So, I'm off track on your question. But every time we come in contact with somebody else, the more aware and present you can be. So that's pretty catchphrase at the moment. Mm. But I like to be tangible and concrete. So the way that I am present and with people is my breath. So I literally feel the breath on my upper lip when I'm talking to somebody. You would think that would distract me from you, but... I'm just doing it now, I'm thinking, yeah. yeah, there it is. Yeah, because at first it is a bit like that. You literally are like, you're trying to look at your nose. And... But what I'm saying is, while we're talking, if I'm conscious of my breath, I'm taking all of you in. So in this moment, I'm, I'm here. Another way that might not be as intrusive as that is just to feel your fingertips. And if you can bring awareness to your fingertips, you'd think that's the distraction from our conversation, but that allows you to be present. Mm. I'm here. I'm mm. here. I'm 35 years old. I'm in Australia as a Canadian. September 12th, is it? Yeah. Mm. September 12th. I'm right here. I'm right now. And in this moment, there is never a problem. Mm. So mm. the only power we have is in the powerful now. Yeah. So every social interaction is an opportunity for two things. There's that conflict, but see how I just saw the opportunity for clarity, that opportunity for balance. And interesting, because I would probably use more like the word balancing, like those, um, you know, those half moons that the physio, I call it, it's called a wobble board. Yeah, no, from, in terms of trying to find your core balance. Your core balance. It's, called, it's sometimes it's called a balance board. Yeah. Constantly balancing, you know, that thing that off centers us actually is the thing that tips us and has us go, oh, wait over here. Mm. Even when you feel like you've got it, it's work. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you don't yeah. really ever get it. Yeah. You're, it's you get the it for a odyssey moment. itself. Yeah, that journey, that moment of like, and it feels good, right? It's like, oh, I'm there. And then you, it's, it's still work. Mm. I just wonder, for your own recipe for balance, I mean, you travel a lot, you're busy, you're in a relationship. You know, how do you find balance because you know they always say the plumber's got licky taps yeah and 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 everything you say it just resonates you go I got all that and I just wonder you know for you have you found your own recipe great you know that yes because it haunts me it haunt <laughs> my being my word haunts me because I every exercise I'm doing it you know like I'm doing it on myself because I I can't speak unless I feel it I'm a, the worst faker ever, and I've tried to do it, but I'm just so transparent. So I've always been really um, full on on myself, mm. and everything I speak about is a personal comes from a, a personal journey. Um, so my own secret for balance, I think, has always been asking my questions before it gets really bad, and that's where, for example. I feel, I'm not, I haven't lost it yet, but I feel like my life is too noisy. So I will go for three days in silence and I'll go to a meditation retreat. I don't wait till I've lost it. Right. I actually book it in yeah. because I can feel you it can coming. See the signs. Yes. So I think as I've evolved, my, it's mm. the distinctions 
come faster. It used to be, yes, I needed a mm. bus, mm. something happened, and then I would react. So through working on this and slowing myself down a little bit, I actually am able to have more balance. So yeah. I, I put the trip in or the, the off time before it's completely needed.